Hey, you guys, this is our next guest expert interview for the Brave Healers Book Writing Mastermind Program. I'm so happy and honored to have Honoree Quarter here. Um, she's been a mentor of mine. I don't know when I found you, Honoree. I, um, it has to be at least a year, and I've read pretty much every book you've written so far on writing. <laughs> And I want you guys all to pick up, um, definitely start with Write Like a Boss, Publish publish Like a Boss, and Market Like a Boss. And I saw on Amazon that you have those in a package, I think. Yeah. Yeah, yeah awesome. Yeah. So um, welcome. Uh, why don't you introduce yourself a little bit and just uh, tell the ladies what you're up to. So I'm Honoré Quarter. I have written 51 books so far. I'm about a book that I didn't write, but I'm the co-creator of the Miracle Morning for Couples. So we're releasing that Ooh. Valentine's Day. Um, so in just like in a blink of an eye, I guess a month from now, um, I write a few books a year. Um, I have, I think, 10 books on writing. So you mentioned three. I have the Prosperous Writer book series, and then I have You Must Write a Book. And the companion workbook, which is I Must Write My Book. I've written a book series for single moms, a book for single dads, a couple of books on divorce, a few books on business. I think that's all I can recall at the, at the moment. I write books. That's you one of the things books. I do. And I was a business and executive coach and a corporate trainer and a motivational speaker for a long time. And then when I started writing books, I found that was the conversation I would have with people on the street, people in parties, people in the elevator. And my clients would say, I've always wanted to write a book. How do you do that? What's the process? And now my coaching centers around working with people to craft, write, publish, launch, and market their books. And, that, and all of the steps, the 8 million steps, <laughs> give or take, give or take a few million um, involved in that process. And it is my great pleasure to work with people to do that. So that's actually a great place to start. You know, I know you're laughing at the 8 million steps, but that's no joke and it paralyzes people. Yes, so what would you sure. first say about that? Like, how can we get rid of that overwhelming feeling and, and prevent that from totally paralyzing us and making us say, forget it, I can't do this? Well, writing a book is not dissimilar to being a parent or <laughs> being a partner or learning anything else that you've ever learned, another language, a getting a certification in something, getting a degree in something. If someone told you up front, here are the number of tests you will take. Here are the number of papers you will write. Here are the number of emails you will respond to. Here are the number of interviews you have to go on. Here are the number of coworkers you will work with. You would say, forget it, I quit. But what you do is you take one step at a time, usually in some kind of order, right? <laughs> some kind of logical order. And when you don't know something, you raise your hand and you ask a question yeah. and you get the information you need and then you take the next step. And then the next day you get up and you do it all again. And yes. that's, how you, that's how you work through the process of writing a book also is you take one step at a time. You figure out what the next most important step is or the first important step for you to take really is to decide to write the book. And then what do you do next? And then what do you do after that? And then what do you do after that? And who, where are some resources that you can use? And who are some people who have gone before you on this path who can save you time, make time for you, right? All of those things. One day at a time, one step at a time. I think is the most important thing, um, the most important thing that you said there, and it's funny, I'm writing a blog for somebody about not doing this alone. And that's mm -hmm. it right there. Like you guys have such incredible resources around you, especially in this day and age, there's really no excuse not to reach out. Right. We're not in that place of, um, I have to do it all, all alone because that's, what's going to make me look good. You know, um, it's quite the opposite. Nor actually. should you, nor should you, yeah. Gosh, you don't do every piece of the book production process yourself. In fact, you have to have a team of people in order to do it well. Yeah, you don't try to write your college math class and then teach it to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to us about that team. Who's the team? Who's your team? My team consists of editors, editors who put editor in the box on their tax return that says, what do you do for a living? That's a good way to know that you're using the right person for any one that you hire, whether it's an attorney or an editor or a graphic designer. 
So I have a graphic designer who designs the interior files for my book and you can get, um, in my case, I choose to get custom interior so that I can have pages in there, important pages that you would want to have in your book that you can't get from just a free service that outputs a file like Scribner. For example, wow. um, um, I have a copywriter because writing a book and copywriting sales copy are not the same writing. <laughs> so I have an expert who knows exactly how to sell a book with words magically. Um, my cover, I have a cover designer. Um, my cover designer, and my interior designer happen to now be the same person who is wildly uh, creative and wonderful. Um, and then I have proofreaders who then go through and clean up behind everybody to make sure that nothing is missed. And, it, and just, uh, I want to say two things about that process, if I may, to a beginner, because this is something that would have been helpful for me to know. One, when you get your manuscript back from an editor, if they are any good, you are going to have sent them the most beautiful, clean prose, the, the, a document that you are absolutely sure contains zero errors, needs uh -huh. nothing more than, a, than just a, a, an easy read while watching reruns of Everybody Loves Raymond. This, <laughs> same, this same document will be returned to you looking like a crime scene. <laughs> Every time. <laughs> <laughs> so just be prepared for the fact that an expert is going to go through your carefully crafted prose and they are going to mark it up and send it back to you. And that's okay. It happens to me. It happens to Laura. It happens yeah. to people who write books all the time. It happens to Stephen King. So it's totally fine. That's the expectation. That's what they're there for. They are there to turn your words into a, a very clean and wonderful ride. It's like, Driving your 1965 uh, Mustang in the Walmart parking lot over speed bumps <laughs> or driving your brand new Ferrari, Porsche, you know, insert luxury vehicle here on the Autobahn. Two totally different experiences. You're driving a car, but one is delightful and one is life changing in a bad way. <laughs> yeah. Right? That's a really yeah. good point. And some of the ladies are still wrapping their minds around what the, um, you know, just the whole editor thing. So I know that it seems funny to say, why is this necessary? You just gave a really perfect example of the difference that could be from not having yeah. one to having one. But in your world, I mean, are you pretty hard and fast like I am that you need to spend the money for a professional editor? Oh, a thousand percent. Yes. Yeah. Please don't, please don't publish a book that you didn't have edited. Don't yeah. insult the reader. Don't insult the person who's going to pay money for it or take their time to sit down and try to read it. Read it. I'll tell you a quick story. I was at a Christmas party and now I'm the, the, the author, right? So people want to come and pick my brain. So I'm in this beautiful mansion in Dallas and this gentleman is introduced to me and he has his book and he's written a thriller. I love a good thriller. So I was like, this is sweet free book by the author. I'm ready. I couldn't read past the first chapter. Oh. There were so many errors. And let's be clear, author in my little box on my tax return, not editor. I don't even have an editor's eye. It didn't even hurt my head as much as it would have hurt a professional, but I couldn't read it. So then yeah. this same lovely gentleman, he's older and retired, and he sends me an email recently and he said, Oh, I've published my second book because he's on my <laughs> list, right? So he gets my emails. Like, did you publish a book? What are you excited about? He responds, yes, I published a book. So I look it up on Amazon and I can see all of the mistakes that he's making. Uh -oh. And I know he can afford to pay me. And I kind of waffled back and forth with, do I write to him and say, you know, you're really just shooting yourself in the foot with, you don't know what you don't know. And so you're going to all this effort of writing a book and let's make let's make something clear. There are easier and faster ways to make a buck, <laughs> right? That's for <laughs> than, sure. Than to write a book sometimes. And so if you're going to go to all that effort, why not go all the way there? And I had suggested with the first book, you know, please, you might want to look into to an editor and I have three that are wonderful. You're going to pay for it. It's going to be one of the most expensive investments that you make with regards to your book and it's going to return in kind whichever way you go so it's either going to return in kind with book sales and 
increased revenue, increased brand. What if you're a nonfiction writer, you're probably writing a book that is an extension of you and your education and your knowledge and your services, and you want people to pay you for same. If you put a book out there that's done poorly, not edited, don't expect people to then turn around and overlook that and hire and go, oh, well, she just published it herself. She didn't know any better. They're going to go, hmm, this must be the level of attention and detail that she pays to all of her business. Yes. So how about I'm not going to pay her at all? Well, you were, you know, the one who recommended my editor for the last book. And um, we're actually going to be talking with Tammy Metzler on Yay! Monday. Yes. She's so good. She's um, so good. I get compliments about her from the New York Times bestselling authors that I work with in the Miracle Morning book series. Nice. She gets compliments and she is not um, as expensive as she could be. <laughs> yes. Thank goodness for me. Yeah, I know. Keep her paid. Keep her paid and <laughs> keep that. Well, so we're going to be talking to her and we're going to pick her brain way more about yeah. editing, but you said something Good. that I want to um, kind of go off of. And that was, you know, don't expect to write a book uh, to make money. However, I know that you are the queen of book writing as a business. And so why don't you talk more about that and get people excited about the possibilities? There? Sure. Well, let me just, let me just actually correct what yeah. you just said, if you don't mind, because I don't want people to hear that I said you can't make money from your books. Because it's what you I hear. To say, no, I'm saying don't expect yeah. to make money from your book if you do a crappy job publishing it. Yes, that's yes, what yes. I, That's what I'm talking about. Well, I, I have a course, so my You Must Write a Book course, and I start in the very first session at the very beginning, and I debunk that. There are lots of people who say, oh, I'm going to have a book, but everyone says you can't make money from your book. Exactly. This girl is a seven-figure author. So yes. somebody making money from her book. And I'm the poorest of my, of my peers in terms of I write nonfiction and nonfiction authors don't tend to do as well as fiction authors. I know probably six authors who make a million dollars a month. Nice. So I don't know if you call that making a living from your writing or making money from your book. I do. <laughs> no, you're making <laughs> me realize. Yes. Yeah. You're making me realize that this, this myth is almost incorrect. Like yeah, it totally it's incorrect. is. It's incorrect. Yeah, good. Yeah. Like so, it. so people say you just you 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 don't make money from your business card, except you give your business card out and people hire you. So you're you either you're either making money because you sell your book to someone and they give you what you charge for your book, yep. or you're making money as a result of your book because someone read your book and they say, "Wow, this is the person that I want to hire or engage." Or the services that I need because this person is the authority, they're the expert, and so I've hired them. So I have something that I say uh, to my class, and it is as follows earmuffs if you are offended by saucy language. But I, people all the time come to me and they go, Oh, this book is my baby. This is my baby. I put my heart and soul into this. And I'm like, No, no, no. You, if you, you have a baby, if you have an actual baby, <laughs> <laughs> if you've made a person, or you have a furry child, you have a baby. Your book is your bitch, kids. And that bitch better be out on the corner making money for your business. So you don't say, oh, this phone is my baby, right? This pen is my baby. I put everything into it. No, you're like, this. it better work. <laughs> I got to sell it. A girl's got to eat, okay? Yeah. So no offense meant, but it's, it's meant to kind of get your attention and make you realize that the only babies you have are actual babies. <laughs> and then everything else, everything in your business is an extension of your business. And it's meant to be an investment that you make so that you get a return on it back to your business. You're investing in writing your book. You're investing in editing, publishing, proofreading, graphic design, all of the things so that when you are not there, but your book is, your book is a fine representation of who you are. Have you, have any of your books been the baby? Did you ever make that mistake of being too emotionally attached to them? What would mm -hmm. you say to somebody who is in there in that? And like, how are, how are they going to detach? Like you're talking about, what is it? What is it that they need to know? that will just make them realize they can't be all attached in it like that. It's not their, it's not their baby. I don't understand why it is their baby. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's not, I want to, it's, I'm, it's I'm, not a living, breathing being. It is, it is your knowledge in the form of words. It's in a the tool, form, really. 
it is a tool. You yeah. wouldn't give a presentation and go, this presentation is my baby. Or right. your book is your presentation in written form. It doesn't logically make sense to me when someone says it is their baby. It is, yeah. it is a piece of your marketing, an extension of your marketing department and should be treated as such. It should be invested in and cared for. You have to care about it, but you don't care about it like if it's in the street and <laughs> someone runs over it, your life is over. This is this, right. Does that make sense? It totally does. And I'm making you talk about it more because I, I have a particular group of ladies who are all healers. They're, they all yeah. are mind-body connected. They all understand yep. feeling and emotion. And I don't want them yes. to feel like this about their books. I want them to get badass on the marketing. I want them yes. to get badass on the tool of it. And I don't want them to be so attached that they F that all up. Yes. And you can't, you can't connect ladies. So I'm talking to you now, whoever you are I'm talking to you <laughs> and I'm going to say, you will not connect to the people you can heal the people who are desperate for the information that yes. you have and the healing, the caring, the energy, right? Everything is energy and it comes back to you. You're putting your healing energy into someone that someone can't even connect to you if they don't know about you. And the way they're going to find out about you is through your book. So if you're too busy worrying about whatever she said you're doing, stop doing that and start treating it like it is your ability to, to reach someone in absentia. You don't have to be there for someone to connect with you and then come to you and then you can work your magic on them through your healing. But if you stay stuck where you are, you will, someone will miss the opportunity to be healed by you. And wouldn't that be more tragic than where you are stuck right now? Definitely. Good message. Um, okay. Make us understand uh, why self-publishing is sometimes a better business decision than traditional publishing. Sure. So self-publishing is the best decision, in my opinion, for most people who are not famous and have a platform already. And if you are famous and have a platform already, self-publishing is also a good option for you because the reason publishers pay famous people with platforms to write books is because they know they'll sell books and they're in business to make money. That that's right. Right. Okay. Um, Self-publishing allows you creative control, content control, timing control, income control. You make more money from a self-published book on a percentage basis. Uh, very often traditional deals are entirely weighted to pay, um, the publisher and not the author. Um, I won't tell you who it is, but we worked with in the Miracle Morning book series, we worked with a New York Times bestselling author. And this author told me that her checks are bigger from her percentage of the books. And she's not the only person in the book that gets paid um, more than all six of her New York Times bestselling books combined. Wow. Um, oh because, because it's been a while since she published those books. And what comes with being a New York Times bestselling author is you get to say, I'm a New York Times bestselling author and that and $4 will buy you most drinks at Starbucks, but it doesn't necessarily do anything else. Right. It doesn't necessarily impact your paycheck. So right. I'm a big fan of self-publishing. I would take a seven figure advance a seven figure <laughs> non recoupable advance from New York. And that's the only way I would, that I would take um, a book deal. Yeah. It's for, the, it's for the exposure at this point, because I have lots of other assets to sell. There's that. And then also the opportunity to um, uh, go through that process perhaps. But now that I've built my own platform and I have my own following, They'd have to, they'd have to put some zeros on that payment in order to bring me over. Yeah. I love that. And so platform and following. So I've been, you know, <laughs> bugging these ladies and for everyone else who's listening to this too, you know, I said that good old saying, when's the best time to plant a tree 10 years ago? When's the second yes. best time today? Yes. So platform building, like don't resist it. Can you talk a little bit about how you've built yours? Maybe what are some of the best tricks, tips, advice? My best advice is to start putting your content out in whatever form works 
best for you. And I know that there are formulas and there are folks that sell courses on this is my formula for this and that and the other thing. And ultimately what it comes down to is finding one person at a time who is the person that you serve and connecting with that person, mm -hmm. really connecting with them, providing them with information they need, providing them with solutions to their challenges and problems, staying connected to them, being your authentic self. And as you do that, your platform will grow. I, I had a conversation with someone I'm working with on a project. He is a New York Times bestselling author. And he said, you know, what masterminds or whatever do you use? And I said, honestly, I find that um, I'm a good bit older than the, the kids now that are talking about how to build platforms. And they talk about these formulas. Um, but ultimately, when they run the numbers, they just still get a 1% return. If you send an email out, you're going to get 1% of the people on your list that are going to buy whatever it is. 1%, maybe a little bit more, but you can count on 1%. And there isn't any part of their formula that impacts that. They just walk people through their formula. So they actually go through the exercise of building the platform, which they could have done without going through their class. Right. Um, my attitude has always been to have, or my, my formula, which is not really a formula. It's just my philosophy is that I'm active on social media. I'm authentic. Um, I believe social media is two parts. It's one part social, which is, uh, Hey, how are you? And I like your post and commenting and responding to people. And that's the fun part. And then there's the media part, which is, Hey, I have something to sell if you're interested in it here's a link, here's, some, here's a way to get more information about it. And keeping that about 80-20 uh, seems to be very effective. So it's 80% cat pictures and what my husband made for dinner and <laughs> you know, sunrise now and again. You know, those are the things that are interesting to me besides what I do for work. Yeah. And then the fact that I'm a professional and this is what I sell professionally. And if you'd like more information about that, then Mazel Tov, I'm happy to be of service to you if I'm the right fit for you. You're talking about getting your content out there. And I know consistency is really key for that in building your platform over time. What other ways do you put content out or other ways you've tried in the past? Maybe you like or don't like. I'm a, I blog. So I used to have the successful single mom blog and then I would have my honorary enterprises blog, which was when I did business and executive coaching and now it's all just at my website. <laughs> yes. Now it's just, it's just all sprinkled in there. And it is the opposite advice that I would give someone, which is pick a horse and write it. I've been <laughs> doing it long enough that I have seen um, someone pick up a copy of the successful single mom and then want to write a book and come through another book series. So that's why I started just, co-mingling because I have these different vertical interests. If you're just starting out, build a really strong presence in one particular, I, we call it verticals, right? One particular area of knowledge. And then you can branch out and do whatever you want. Once you've built a solid foundation and you have streams of income that you can live off of coming in, then you can do whatever you want. Yeah, got it. I do. I mean, I like the blogging too. It's been a fun way to build the platform. Um, email list building is can yes, be the so same. Oh yes. All of that. I apologize for interrupting it, it, it. Email. I blog and then put people on my list and then yes. I send people emails. And, and as far as that goes, I want to give you information. I heard a, a good piece of advice I'd like to pass on and then I've heard it several times since. I don't remember the first time I heard it, but it was basically, if you give your good stuff away for free, then people will pay you to tell it to them again. Hmm. There is almost nothing, save the, you must write a book course that requires hours and hours and hours and hours and hours. Um, there's almost nothing that I have, that I hold back. Does that make sense? It's like, That's if you ask me a question, I'll tell you. Yeah, that's the first time I've heard it. I, I might need you to say that one again. So there's nothing that they can, can, they'll get it for free, but they will pay to hear it again? Yes, yes. Huh. Okay. Yes. yes, and I think the difference is, I think the difference is, is when you get it for free, um, it's not pertaining to your particular situation. 
Mm. Whenever I write a book, I put everything in there that I can possibly think to put in there without having a conversation with the reader. So if you read any one of my books on writing, that's my general advice for all writers. But if yeah. I got on the phone with you and I talk to you about your situation, I'll use the Nifty 15 as an example. The Nifty 15 is the second book in the Prosperous Writer series and the subtitle is Write Your Book in 15 Minutes a Day. No one can tell me they don't have 15 minutes, right? <laughs> yeah. So if I were to talk to you, we might figure out that you have six minutes or eight minutes Got or it. 27 minutes. Mm -hmm. But for gen if in general, everybody has 15 minutes find your 15 minutes. Here's how you find your 15 minutes. Here's how you use your 15 minutes, blah, blah, blah. You can turn anything into several chapters. If you're, if you're focused enough and you look at it from all angles and that's how you turn what seems to be a little bit of information into enough information to fill uh, 30,000 words of a book. Uh -huh. so, um, it, I'll stop with that. So you, so you um, are actually starting to answer a question that came up a lot and the, the gals kept asking me, well, how long should a book be? So, you know, I learned that 30,000 through NaNoWriMo and I thought, oh, okay, 30,000 words, I could do that in a month easy. So I did that program. So uh, 30,000, talk to me about that a little bit. Like wh what's the length? Well, the length is as long as you want it to be. My very first book was, once I learned about word counts, it was 11,000 words. Uh -huh. however, okay. however, I learned a few things that I'll pass on. Um, a book less than 100 pages cannot have words on the spine. Oh, if there we go. Yeah. To go shorter, if you choose to go shorter. So what you want, I don't have a book handy, but I'll just hold up my phone. If you want words on the spine, you have to have 100 pages. If you don't have a book that's this size at 100 pages, then try a book that's this size. Um, yep. and I did my, my first book was a book that I made small enough so that it would fit in the breast pocket of a man's suit jacket. Nice, yeah. That way, when I was marketing, because men don't carry purses, so I wouldn't pass, I would carry books in my purse, but I, as a business and executive coach, the majority of my clients at the time were men. And they would say, oh, you're an author. What have you written? And I would say, I have a book if you'd like it. And they would say, oh, yeah, that'd be great. And then they were so relieved that it wasn't, you know, this size. Yep. What were they going to do with this puppy? I love right? that. They're going to walk around with it. So they would stick it in their suit jacket pocket. I had it measured so that it was, I think it was like four, four and an eight by five and five eighths or something like that. It was just perfect to fit right in their breast pocket. And it was skinny enough. And then it was enough. It was enough for them to hire me as their coach because that was that, that was a turning point in my in my fee structure and and other things that I was doing. I love that. I love talking about the size of the book that way too. So and I and I I think I had heard you talk about the spine before. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but that's awesome because I hadn't forgotten that little I had forgotten that little tidbit. Um, and it's really just as long as you need to get your full message that you want to get. Correct. Right. So I started with that to say that the average nonfiction book is somewhere between maybe 35 and 60,000 words. Okay. I tend to roll right around the 35 to 40,000. Yep. That's when I tend to run out of words for any topic that I'm writing about. The Miracle Morning books are anywhere from 55 to 70,000 books. Also nonfiction books. Uh -huh. But if you get into the fiction books, there are some, some of my uh, peers will write books that are 120,000. Like the epic fantasy books are super long. Look, a nonfiction book is meant to solve a problem. Yep. It's meant to provide a solution to a problem that someone has, even if they don't know they have a problem. And in, in thinking about that, what do you need to say in order for your reader to solve their problem? Take as long as it takes. Don't take any longer. The one problem that I have, I have a mastermind group and I, I sent a book to them for the first meeting as a gift. And the, the complaint that I had when they got the books, they were like, oh, the reason I don't read nonfiction is because it seems like they just tell you and tell you and tell you instead of just telling you and calling it a day, they feel like they need to fill space. Mm. Analyze your content at some point from the from the point of view of are you moving right along or are you beating a dead horse? 
right? Yep. You tell them what you're going to tell them, you tell them, and then you tell them what you told them, but you don't tell them what you're going to tell them, tell them, tell them, <laughs> tell them, tell them, tell them, and then tell them what you told them because they will quit reading. And what you want is for someone to go all the way through your book, to fall in love with you and your content, and then begin a conversation with you outside of the book. Yes. That's super great advice. What would you, um, are you always having your ideal client or avatar in your mind when you're writing? Yes. Yes. Okay. That's, that's where I start. I identify who the book is for and I write the book to that one person, okay. that one identified person and their qualities and characteristics. And I, when I take a four, when I have a fork in the road, do, do I write this or do I write that? It's like, what does my avatar need to hear? You can't, write a book that's all things to all people. You have to write to one person, but think about the, the information in your book as being a rock that you, you drop into a pond and then the ripples go all the way out to the edge. The best example that I've heard is that Harry Potter was written for 12 year old boys. <laughs> JK Rowling wrote the book for 12 year old boys, but she did such a good job of writing a great book for 12 year old boys that they told their 14 year old sisters, who told their 35 year old mothers, who told their 70 year old uh, grandmothers, right? And so they're uh, on and on and on. When you do it well, it becomes viral. And when right. you don't do it well, it just dies. And then you say, nobody makes any money from their books. Don't expect to make any money from their books. And you're right back where we started right? in this conversation, sadly. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, so it's important to write for your, for that person in mind, but if you're doing it well, um, yeah. it could, anyone would pick that up and, and have some benefit in it. Correct. I, yeah. Correct. Okay. Um, uh, is there anything else you want to say about the, the, that hot topic, avatar, ideal client, any other tips, tricks when these ladies are sort of crafting their book for the first time, they're trying to think about that message, anything else along those lines? Um, there is so much there. there I, I could, I, I, I could start a, along a path that would take us a minute to get all the way through it. I think the best thing to do is to start with not starting with the avatar, but before you start with the, with the avatar and even the contents of the book, decide what you want the book to do for you. So dial into WIIFM, what's in it for me? What do I want from the book? And this is not altruistic, I wanna save the seals. This is no, what yeah, do you want selfish. the book for you, the selfish yeah. reason that you're writing the book. What ultimately do you want from the book? Do you want income because people pay you for the book? Do you want income because people read your book and hire you or both or more? What does that look like? Get really clear on what it is that you want from your book and then go on to the next thing. Then say, okay, well, who is the book for? And then what do I want them to get out of it? Mm -hmm. What do nice. I want them? What do I want them to, to have happen as a result of reading my book? What do I want them to do or not do? And I can give you a quick example. When I wrote, you must write a book. I have two questions that I, that I tell my clients. First, what do you want the reader to do as a result of reading your book? So I want everyone to write a book. You must write a book. That's the title. But I put all the stuff in there about the technical pieces and having an editor and a graphic designer and making it look nice. Don't let it be looking self-published, <laughs> <laughs> right? You didn't go to the school of the online blah, 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 dot com for a weekend and get a nursing degree and then go, I'm an nurse, yay, right? <laughs> like you went the whole way there. So I talk about why it's important. And so the, the thing I don't, I want them not to do is write a crappy book. I don't want them to write a book that later they look back and go, oh, this book is terrible. This book cover is terrible. I didn't have it edited. Someone found a typo. I'm mortified. I'm ashamed. You're yeah. going to be proud of your book. And so, so those are the two questions. What do you want the reader to do? And what do you want them to not do? I want them to write a book and I want them to not be sad about the fact that they wrote their book later. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Perfect. Yeah. Um, so, okay. So anyone who doesn't know, um, Honoré has the Prosperous Writers Mastermind on Facebook and it's a free group that you can be a part of. So go look that up. You want to be in that group and have all of those amazing resources around you. Thank you, by the way, for that group. I'm just saying, cause like yeah. you're a busy lady and you, you are in that group. It's not like you're a ghost in there. Like, no, you know, I, I 
I get in there. I get in there pretty yes. often. Yeah. I greatly appreciate your presence in that group and the caliber of people that you attract to that group. So I'll just say that about that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and then you were reminding me that one of the first books I read that you you have so many, I can't remember all the titles, but it was the Prosperous Writers series. And it was the one about getting readers. Tell yeah, me so, the, so, so I'll just tell you the five books in this series. Okay, so there's, cool. the, there's Prosperity for Writers, which is about changing your mindset for making money as a writer. So just, just, getting, that. just getting that right. Just get that right, kids. Just, just get that right <laughs> in your halfway there. So then I wrote the Nifty 15 with Brian Meeks. So Brian Meeks and I wrote the Nifty 15, The Prosperous Writer's Guide to Making More Money, which is data-driven. And some people go, math, Excel spreadsheets, eh, I'm one of them. So he brought me to the light a little bit about, you know, if you collect the data and look at the data, it gives you lots of information. Yeah. You should know who your reader is and blah, blah, blah. And then we wrote the Prosperous Writer's Guide to Finding Readers. And it's all of the ninja tips and tricks about where you put your books and, and how you get your books in the hands of readers. And, and I'll just show you one quick thing that I have. Um, you, and this is stamps.com. This is oh, super yeah. easy. I'm so a fan. I have my book covers. <laughs> Oh, on, cool. On stamps and you I can get it. them, but I have all of them. I don't have all of them, but I have vision to reality. Oh my gosh. I'm totally have, doing it. And I have <laughs> business dating, which is about networking. And then nice. I have some miracle morning millionaire stamps, which shh, I sent those out to the, to the <laughs> author yesterday and addiction recovery. And then the book that hasn't been released yet, the couple's book. So you have these stamps nice. and they're part of your marketing. So when you go to the post office to mail a package, to mail books to your advanced reader team, to send a thank you, to send a mug to someone who's read your book as a thank you, you go and they say, do you need stamps? And you're like, no. And you do a little hair flip. You're like, no, my stamps are custom. Thank you very much. I love it. Yes. And there are all sorts of things like that in the Finding Readers book because I am a a conservative person when it comes to just spending money. And I see people, I don't, I don't like wasting time or money. And so when I'm looking at a marketing strategy, I'm thinking, how do I get the most bang for my buck legitimately? Like when I'm going to, if I'm going to do something time or money, I want to make sure that I have a good return on that investment, whether it's time or money, money is not finite. Time is finite, right? I would actually rather spend money than time because once you've spent time, it's gone forever. Um, so when you're looking at a marketing strategy, you want to look at something that's like, wow, what can I do that's really going to, to give a good return and don't just do some Facebook advertising because somebody said that's a good idea or, or come up with a, a professional channel on Instagram because someone said that's a good idea. Really dial into what's true for you, what feels right to you and go with that. Get, be in your own lane. Just me having a live course make some of my contemporaries bonkers. Because <laughs> they're like, no, 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 you just do a course and you put it out there and you make money while you sleep. And I'm like, I make money while I sleep just fine. <laughs> Thank you very much. And I can't put everything in a course. I have to talk to people. Yeah. So we have to be live. I don't know what to tell you. And it seems to be working. And all of a sudden now the tide is turning. Honoré wasn't so foolish after all. <laughs> I have a live course because it's better. Oh, really? So you have to listen to your own voice. This is your, you got this right in here and you've got to listen to it. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so true. Yeah. Okay. Just a couple of minutes left and um, the marketing was something I was going to ask you about. So you kind of covered that. I know there's like, yeah, there's volumes about marketing. Are there any other programs that you're doing that you want to mention or talk about? No, I just have the, you must write a book live coaching course, which is really for professionals. It's really for business folks or professionals, people building, um, it, it, all the people are all over the map that, that come. Some of them are traditional business folks and some of them are people who uh, do something interesting. So I'll give a shout out to Lisa from Fertility Friday. She helps women chart their cycles so that they can get pregnant. So she took my first course and came and did a kind of popped into the first session and held up her book and was like, here it is. And, you know, I did it and, and it was great. And um, that's the only thing that I'm, that I'm working on. Um, that's not the only thing I'm working on, but you know what I mean. I <laughs> do know what you mean. I <laughs> do. Besides course. your 51 books, holy 
cow, you know? Yeah. yeah. Besides the book um, writing, I'm looking at the <laughs> list of the books of the books that I'm writing. So I'm working on the Miracle Morning for teachers this year. Cool. So we'll get we'll get that published. And so I'm working on a few book projects. I'm working on a fiction on a fiction series too. So I'm dipping my toe in something new. And I so awesome. when you say the people that are doing their book for the first time. I feel like a complete, I know how to produce a book, but I don't know how to write a fiction book. So I understand that psychology of what if I do it wrong and what if right. I screw it up? But I will say, whenever I talk about um, anything, if you read any of my books, I'm talking from a voice of experience. So I don't say, don't use your English teacher from the 10th grade, who's now your neighbor as your editor because that's a bad idea because I'm being judgmental. I may or may not have used a 10th grade English teacher who was retired as an editor in the beginning. I can't, I can't confirm or deny, but I may or may not have made every single mistake <laughs> that, that I caution people against making. If you can just step through the, my book is my baby and realize that your book is a project and it has the opportunity to be a, an asset for your business and take one step and then take the next one and take the next one and do the best that you can, then you've done the best that you can do. And if it isn't the way that you want it, the good news is it's self-publishing. You can change the cover. You can go back and have a book edited that wasn't edited before. You right. can change the title and republish it if you, if you discover something new. Or as Dr. Phil said, you either make the right decision or you make the decision right. And when you know better, you do better. Yes. Like just to bring a little pop psychology into the, into the program today. Yes. Um, so it's not, a, this is not an opportunity for you to beat yourself up. This is an opportunity for you to connect your area of genius with people who need it. A book is a vehicle for you. And I That's highly awesome. encourage, I highly encourage everyone to write a book because I wrote my first book. My life is completely different than I think it would have ended up otherwise. And that's why I'm so passionate about it. So if they, they take nothing else from this conversation. I hope that, that it is enough of an inspiration for them to go, all right, oh, I'm just going to suck it up and do it. And, and then yes. get, get to the cool part on the other side. Where they're <laughs> yes. really to tell people everywhere they go that they're an author. Thank you so much for your wisdom and your passion. Um, you've been such an incredible mentor for me along this journey. And I really appreciate your time and being here. Where can everyone find you? What's your website? honorayquarter.com. All right. And I'm guys. findable. I'm findable. Yes, and someone, you are. Oh, I couldn't find your, number, your email. I'm like, really? You didn't try. <laughs> <laughs> I will list it for everyone on the video too. So it'll be there, you guys. So thanks again. Um, and you guys go into the group. I'm telling you, Prosperous Writers Mastermind on Facebook. Yeah. And say hi. <laughs> tell us where you, tell me where you found the group. And also when you do write your book, please do a post somewhere on social media and tag me and say that you found, we, we, we connected here. I would love to hear about what you're working on and what you're healing. Yeah. Yay. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you, Honoré. Have a All good right. one. Mwah. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Have a blessed day. All right. Let's see here.